Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'll be going through my trade targets for round five and it's gonna be really interesting. I think I do need to focus on the defenders in this segment just because of Doherty, Day um, and others, especially for me at least, um, Duggan, McGrath as well, who's a pretty own player that are all underperforming. And yeah, so it is slightly tailored towards my team um, in this, but I think most people are wondering what to do with defenders, etc. So we'll talk about them for a majority. We won't necessarily talk about it for the whole time because I've already done a video on it, but I guess that's the majority of trade talk this week. So remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So defenders wise, if you wanted a straight Doherty replacement, you could go Duck, um, Duncan. I wouldn't go Ryan because he has a niggle. Obviously, Doherty's um, injured. Rioli is a good one, but if um, Clark is named, get him out of your time. Get him out of your side because Rioli will get tagged by Clark um, against Sydney. Sicily's all right, but I think you can wait a week because he's 881k. But if we actually look at AFL break evens and we go here and we go Sicily, I want to say he's 130. 132. I don't think he hits 132. So I think you can get him for um you can potentially get him for 850, 860k here quite quite easily. If he just hits a hundred or ninety, he'll go down to 860k. He'll um he'll have a 130 out of his system as well. So that'll help as well with his break even being 130 or so again. And that'll really help to enlarge his, I guess, um, fall. And you could really get him here for quite cheap. So um, I wouldn't go Sicily. I'd probably go Dawson as well. I think he's an option. And then don't don't like the look of Redmayne, especially because he doesn't play well in losses. Well is a good option, but there's been talks about there being some shifting in the Gold Coast backline or Gold Coast team. And it looks like McPherson might even be going forward as they try and slip someone else back. He's, um, I can't remember who it was at the time, but they've de there's some talk about that. Sinclair, um, I just don't like. I don't know whether this is a bias or anything because I don't don't remember having him last year, and he kind of burnt me a little. But um, I just don't like him, and I think that average sort of stays around 95, and he isn't a top six defender. Lloyd, I don't like in the Swan system. Ollie Florent, I don't like in the Swan system either. And Eb Richards could be an option if you wanted to go a little bit cheaper. Um, Wilkie is more of a key defender, so I don't really like that option. Brad Hill um, is an option, I guess. If we go to the last three, maybe that will help a little bit. Anyone else pop up? Um, Baker is an option, but we have um, Short coming back, so I don't... We probably have to wait a couple of weeks to see how that goes, and especially because he did score a 79 last week. And then if we go defender, sort of lower the prices, you'll see here, lower the price again. Saad, I don't think is an option as his role doesn't really change with Doherty coming back. Um, with Doherty out, I think it actually does help Cowan a lot. I think Cowan doesn't get stuck on the bench as much, and I think that really does help him sort of score maybe 5, 10 more at least, and that'll help him get his cash chain going. 500k, anyone don't like Harris Andrews? Hunt is too much of a risk for me, I think, especially with how I can move the, I guess, move all the um, pieces on the, um, I guess, the saying, push the magnets around. I can pull them around, and I can really, um, I can get Sarong in and stuff like that, rather than Hunt, and especially with um, Sarong's game this week. I'm really liking the odds of that. And Rivers, I think, is another really good option, especially because I don't see many other people going into the Melbourne midfield. And Salem, I think we had an injury update, and it was further out. I think it was still... He's still three to five weeks away, which means that um, Rivers is still going to get more of a run, and that really helps him out. So I think you could go for him. Stocker, I'm wary of a one bad game that could just stunt his growth. Um... And yeah, I think that's all really for defenders as there's no one I like in... I talked about the 400, 500k guys in the other video, the Day Doherty defense um, video. 
so I don't really like any of them. So I'll move on to if you only have um, Doherty or Day out, or if Day gets down to one week and you're looking to trade Doherty out for a big midfielder, we'll go through those as I didn't really go through them. I originally, I think in my video, actually had um, Oliver in the um, in um, M1 when I did the video, I think. I think you would have seen that. I changed that a little bit, and you can see now that I have Sarong in. Um, Oliver's break even is one, two, three. If we go over to here, where is he? D -d -d where is Oliver? Oliver, no, he's not one, two, three, it's 120. Still, same thing basically applies. I think that he's not going to go too much up in price, and there is a chance that he gets one bad game here and he goes down in price, like even a 110 or something like that, with a 124 coming out of his system and this 149 um, starting to go back into the system, it really is going to be a case that he is going to start, I think, dropping back down to 1 mil or 1.1, 1.2 if he doesn't get a big, big score again. So I'm looking at this like I think he's going to have Setterfield locked up on him the whole game. And I think he's going to not put up a big performance. I say that. He's still going to put up like 105, 110. But he isn't going to put up a 120, 130. And he's going to start to drop a little bit. So I don't want to waste... Um, yes, he's going to be good scores. But I don't want to waste value effectively at the moment when I think he's going to dip down. And um, I don't think he... With Richmond style, I don't know if he plays well at, against them. And then potentially pick him up in two weeks or so against North and um, Gold Coast. I think he does really well against them too, and that's when I pick him up. But maybe this is the opportunity to um, get him, but I don't think it is for me. Um, Crouch, I don't like because Steele's coming back in, I believe Steele's back next week. So Crouch will dip back down again if we look. This is with Steele in these two games, I think, maybe even that game. And this 1-2-5 obviously was without Steele, and I th maybe the 1-2-2 two, two was without Steele. Let's look at Steele. Steele played the first two games, so yeah, no, that those last two 120s are without Steele, so I don't think Crouch is of value at the moment. Tim Kelly, I think, is just too injury risky, and maybe with another game we go on him. Libba was one that I thought about, but um, I think, honestly, that I just am picking Sarong just based on the matchup, and I want to pick Libba maybe up around round 7 or so against Hawks. I think that could be a good matchup. Josh Kelly is another guy that I thought about bringing in, but I just don't like him against Brisbane, against the Swans. I don't like this sort of run that he has. So I want to pick him up post by around round 17, to be honest with you, as I think he has three good games and then he has a run that sort of you can just hold as he will score probably hundreds in that run anyway. LDU, another guy. Um, I don't really like the run necessarily um, and I don't think he has a good run anywhere else in the year so I think he will just get tagged out of game sometimes. Didn't go for Brayshaw 1 because he was too expensive and 2 because he has injury concerns. Um, Setterfield injury concerns, Mason Wood injury concerns but a guy that I heavily looked at. Noah Anderson just not enough form outside of that 150. Merritt and Shield, um, I just didn't go for one because Merritt was, I think, a lit. He's topping out, I think, and sort of there's no growth there. So he would just be getting in scores for scores, and I think Shield could be so up and down. Um, Took Miller, no, this week because of Aish, and um, next week he has North, so maybe next week. Um, Led, Cripper, don't like either of them. Due to break evens, um, Guthrie's coming back into it. Seb Ross, none of these guys really I fancy, and then that's sort of going down the list of midfielders, I guess, that are scoring well. And then if I go to the ruck department, my next goal basically, um, if you wanted to trade target and you had Doherty and you had someone else with all the injuries, I'd be targeting English. That's the only guy I'd be targeting. The next two that um, 
and maybe you could target Darcy, as I think he has a really good game this week. Um, he scored 92 last week. I wonder what his break-even is. I'm guessing it's going to be 100 or so. Darcy, 86 break-even. I think he goes 120 this week, so you're getting 30k out of him. So that could be an option. Um, and yeah, so that's all the rucks, I guess, for trade targets. And then in the forward line, Jezza Cameron, I don't think is an option at that price. If you started with him, good on you. But I don't think as a key forward, sort of, that is really um, a good guy to get in yet. Um, Pickett, I think, slowly drops. Um, I think he had an easy matchup and he sort of burned himself out of a 110-120 type score. And if we look at his break even it's sitting at um 27 so that's all right he should go up another like 40 50k so that'll get you up to 650 but i don't think he's i think he bottom tops out at like 660 670k sort of price range um kerno zebel's a guy that i'm looking in with um <clears throat> position changes i guess d dual positions him he'll slide back and i'll get him in for duggan next week that's really the plan um, and then I got to find a way to get Grundy up to English if Gorn comes back the next week, which might mean Duggan holds again, or I go Duggan down to like a, someone else in the, um, back line to get that, etc. Um, but yeah. And then is there anyone else here that I really like the look of? Um, Rochelle is an interesting one as well that you could potentially do. You know what might actually help me out? I might be able to, with Sheasel coming back, um, into the back line, I might be able to shift Duggan and get the likes of an Oes or someone else anywhere here because I can, um, flip positions around, etc. and get, um, I guess a forward in here or even potentially a midfielder in at this spot here and use um and yeah so that's potential there so i guess i'm just trying to get through this round and use um and know that grundy's an upgrade to english in the next coming weeks where i have to get 100k worth of value in so that's really my trade target for this week is basically any there was about what 20 or so defenders that you could tar oh Probably 20 or so guys that you could target for Doherty. Um, with Day, you're just going to hope that he gets um, one game because he's currently sitting at, if we look here, um, two games. And if um, I th the tribunal's at 3 p.m., so I expect him to go down to one, maybe even get freed based on the how bad the MRO has been. So if he gets freed, that will help so much because that'll mean that I can get the best out of, if Cowan has a good score, I can get the best out of him. But if he doesn't get freed and it's a one game, I'm going to hold day and put Cowan on field and just hope that I get some good scores out of them. And yeah, that's basically it for this um, trade targets review. So I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.